Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for the year-end top 10 list. About freaking time, huh? Yeah, thank you for your patience. I had expected to have this done much, much sooner, but I had a string of illnesses that kept pushing this back. Uh, nothing life-threatening or anything like that, just stuff that kept me from actually recording. That is, unless you wanted me to do the entire video sounding like this. But I had a feeling you didn't want that. Because this would be annoying, right? Right. <clears throat> but I am back in good health and ready to go, so let's do this thing that we do at the end of every year. Uh, as always, this list is my own personal opinion and nothing more. And you are free to disagree with it in whole or part, as I expect several of you shall. Also, please keep in mind that I do not have time to see every movie that comes out. So if there's a movie you were hoping to see on this list that is not there, it's a pretty good chance I just haven't seen it. And also, just to let you know, this will not have any in-depth reviews or plot summaries or anything like that. This is just going to be short and sweet. Mainly because I've already done vlogs on most of these movies and I'd just be repeating myself. So with all that being said, let's get down to it. These are my top 10 movies of 2014. Number 10, The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. The final chapter of Peter Jackson's Hobbit series definitely had a few issues. It was pretty light on plot and definitely favored style over substance, but it makes up for this with some great action sequences, amazing visuals, and outstanding performances from the cast. I still think this series would have been better served as two films instead of three, but overall I still found the third entry very enjoyable and a fitting conclusion to the trilogy. Number 9. Interstellar I definitely didn't like this one nearly as much as some people seem to, and I had some issues with how this movie couldn't decide if it wanted to be hard science or science fantasy. But it's still a very well-made film and features some solid performances from Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain, and Michael Caine. Number 8. Captain America, The Winter Soldier Captain America continues to be one of the best things in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and his second solo outing was a lot of fun, with plenty of balls-to-the-wall action and a pretty badass villain who's more than a match for Cap. And newcomer Falcon, played by Anthony Mackie, was a welcome addition to the franchise. Number 7. The Lego Movie Who would have thought that a movie about freaking Legos would turn out to be so damn good? And yet, here we are. With a heartwarming story, great voice acting, and animation that I would swear was stop motion if I didn't know for a fact it was CGI, the Lego movie definitely lives up to its theme song. Number 6. Big Hero 6 Yeah, the plot was pretty predictable, but this movie has a lot of heart, some good humor, beautiful animation, and some very likable characters. And how can you not love Baymax? Are we gonna have those in the future? And if so, can the future be, like, now? Like right now? Because I want one. I know I said this already in the vlog, but seriously, I want one. Number 5. Rosewater Jon Stewart did a damn good job with this movie, considering it was his directorial debut, and Gael Garcia Bernal really knocked it out of the park with his portrayal of Maziar Bahari, a journalist who was imprisoned in Iran and accused of being a spy because of his appearance in a Daily Show interview. Sometimes the truth really is stranger than fiction. Number 4. The Raid 2 The Raid was one of my favorite films of 2012, and its sequel did not disappoint at all. Sometimes it really seems like fight choreography and cinematography are lost arts in Hollywood, but thankfully we have Indonesia picking up the slack. With a good story, plenty of hard-hitting martial arts action, and another outstanding performance from Iko Uais, The Raid 2 was one hell of a ride. Number 3. The Book of Life this one had some great voice acting, a very interesting soundtrack, and a story based on Mexican folklore that was perhaps a bit by the numbers, but still quite entertaining. And good lord, I cannot praise Real FX's animation enough. Every single frame was just gorgeous. Number 2. The Imitation Game Benedict Cumberbatch absolutely killed it with his portrayal of Alan Turing in this historical thriller about Turing's life and his work as a codebreaker during World War II. The story was gripping from start to finish, although admittedly it does take a bit of artistic license with the actual historical events it's based on. Kira Knightley turns in a damn good performance as well, and I was especially impressed with Alex Lothar, who plays a younger version of Turing in the film. And I'm a bit surprised more people aren't talking about him, at least not that I've seen. And now, my number one movie of 2014, Gone Girl. 
Actually, that's not true because I haven't seen Gone Girl, but I heard it was good. Come on, you should know by now the first number one is always a fake out. Anyway, the real number one, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I'm guessing most critics will not list this as their number one movie of the year. And you know what? I really don't care. I fucking love this movie. The cast knocked it out of the park, the directing was excellent, the soundtrack was awesome, the action scenes were a lot of fun, and the story was delightfully silly. Is it perfect? Oh hell no. Will it win any awards? Maybe for visual effects, but that's probably about it. Did Lee Pace's makeup look ridiculous? Definitely. Was it the most fun I had at the movies all year? Oh, yeah. And that's my top 10 for 2014. Agree? Disagree? Think I'm an idiot with no taste? Leave your comments below. So, what do we have to look forward to in 2015, aside from a never-ending string of Back to the Future jokes? Oh, fuck me.